Jesse, thank you for taking the time uh, today for a small interview here at SketchUp Basecamp. Can you please introduce yourself? Oh, no, no problem. Yeah, I'm Jesse Serrano. I uh, use SketchUp to make um, robots and for video games, or a video game that I'm working on, getting trying to get started. For a like, very long time, yeah, but SketchUp is yeah, my main tool for making these kind of things. It's your basis. Uh, you, t uh, you said during your talk yeah, that yeah. you used to use it when you were kids oh, with yeah, your no. brother. I grew up with SketchUp. You yeah, grew up with SketchUp. Yeah, he introduced it to me and it was it was kind of mind-blowing at the time just being able to make 3D objects. Mm. So. But yeah, I've kind of grown up with it and it's kind of shaped who I am today actually. So, kind so, of so you talked about robots. That's not a common thing that we see in SketchUp, of course. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw your talk, and uh, it was really, uh, of course, really inspiring and interesting to see your progress and the project that you want to create at the end. But what stru struck me is that uh, it's all fiction. We're okay with that. But uh, the precision and uh, where you want to go with this project is really precise and believable. And can you talk a bit, a bit more yeah. about that? So my mantra at first is I would burn it from one end. I'm a top, I'm a bottom to the top sort of person. Mm -hmm. Like most people, they plan it from top down. They know what they want to make, do, and they just kind of go for it. That's pre precision. But then for me, I was going upwards, and that's just making things, and they grow into what they need to be. And I learned from that that it doesn't make things that are usable. So I had to make it usable. So I started doing it from the opposite direction. But then it would be too constrained. Mm. So I learned to burn, burn the candle from both ends. Ah. So I can make something that is guided, but how it ends up being isn't precisely what I, I was planning it to be. It's better than I could imagine, though. Mm. Literally. Like, I don't, can't imagine what I make. So I just make it and then it makes itself. So better. it's kind of a free flow it's kind of very creativity? Free, it's guided free flow. It's called a guided tropism, I believe. Is what I'm guided, to so it, it was. Uh, it was uh, very procedural kind of procedural uh, it was theorized then this kind of uh, thinking yeah it's about just this branching meandering kind of fractal pattern okay. kind of stuff i see I like see. so yeah and it's very interesting because i just need to know where i'm going mm -hmm. and then how i'm going to get there it kind of makes itself and it filters into so many different things like these ketchup models are precursors to what's going to happen mm -hmm. with procedural generation and e you see it all already with artificial intelligence. It's generating images uh, already, and 3D models very soon. Mm. So that's kind of where this is going to be at, at the head of that curve. So you talked just now about procedural generation and AI. Uh, can you talk a bit about it, and then we'll come back to, yeah. to your models? Yeah. So that's the ultimate goal, like because these models, like I made them as a more of a coping mechanism, really, just mm -hmm. to learn how to do these things, and that's at this very base level what they are, but. They are, they're the key to a mindset that's, un, they're unlocking a mindset kind of thing. And the artistic and practical potential in this is limitless, kind of. So it's, it was like uh, a sort of an art that you did first for yourself? Yes, it's more of an art. It started out as an art. It was just an art. It's more of an art than a science, mm. but I view it as a science because that's how I learn more about the world. So mm. it's my own science. Okay. So. And Regarding your models, they are very intricate, very precise, yeah. as, I, as I said. And how do you find yourself in them? And how do you uh, take the time to make them believable, as you said? Uh, so the, I, the beautiful thing about making these type of machines is they don't have to work. Like specifically, they're not actual mechanical engineering models. Mm -hmm. They only have to look like they, are, they have to be believable. And whenever you have certain aspects of the world that you can make something believable, if you don't just know about the real world to make it so it could be in the real world, but then apply your own science, your own artistic vision, make it your own kind of, mm. then it becomes something never before seen kind of. Yeah, definitely. Your, your design are very, sometimes very funny, sometimes very gritty. Uh, uh, we were talking uh, about uh, a bit of armored core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we're talking robots, yeah. maybe the French audience may know a bit more about, about Gundam or or Zone of the Enders, this kind of creations. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I take pieces from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, some people will say they see uh, Warhammer 40K. Some people they see they say, um, like, Halo. Mm -hmm. Some people say Armored Core and Gundam. And the, thing, the truth about it is it's from everywhere. It's a compendium of all things I've seen. Mm -hmm. And that's what creativity is, it's just taking something and remixing it. Mm -hmm. But if you take enough of it at the same time, no one, it's something so unique that no one can tell what it is. Or at the same time, they think they know what it is because mm -hmm. they're seeing what they want to see in it. So some people will see 40K, some people will see Armored Core, 
And the truth is, it's all of it together. Okay. So and that's why, what makes it uh, completely unique then? Yeah, it's very unique. Let's talk about SketchUp then, because we're at SketchUp Basecamp. Yeah, indeed. How do you use SketchUp in your process? So SketchUp is um, very uh, direct. You can have something on the screen immediately, and mm. it goes at the speed of your thought almost. Which, at first, burning it from the bottom, it was a coping mechanism. It's just a way to turn off my mind. It was meditation, how to make details and just making the details. Mm -hmm. But then from the opposite direction, it was to turn the mind on. Like, I was trying to make something that I wanted a particular shape, and I would just really get into it and make it, mm -hmm. copy the components around it. It's full spatial awareness kind of thing. And also, limitation breeds creativity. So if you have a limitation, you can't really do something, you go around it. Mm. Something that becomes part of your workflow is to meander around whenever there's a difficult situation. That's a very important skill to have when you hit a roadblock that you cannot solve. You have to have the ability to adapt. Mm. And, and we can make a funny parallel, parallel because 3D is uh, digital, but for SketchUp it's more architectural design, so they may be created in the real world, so they have to function. But your designs, as you said, uh, on the, the physics of the earth, it would not work yeah, at no, all. No, no, no. But it's still completely believable, and uh, uh, we get into into your world uh, this, this way it, uh, because the precision in there it, it could work. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. And, and SketchUp uh, helps uh, with that. It, most certainly, yeah, because you can have spatial awareness. You can put things around, make sure they work properly, mm. how they're connected to each other. Like you can see if they're floating and they're not supposed to be floating, or a mechanism is supposed to rotate in a certain way. Mm. And if it's interpenetrating, you have full control over that. It's all about control. So at the same time, you're releasing control, but also maintaining control. Mm. Once again, with both sides of the spectrum. Okay. So. Uh, you said during your talk that you were uh, you you could you can draw you can draw some of your designs, but sometimes you do not do concept design at all, and you straight straight up oh, get yeah. to SketchUp. Yeah, because with SketchUp, you don't have to. It's so. Whenever you get fluent enough with it, it's actually faster to use SketchUp directly rather than concept these things out. Like, mm. yeah, I need a building or something, or like a sci-fi robot or something. Sometimes it's easier just to go into SketchUp and think three-dimensionally and make it immediately right then and there, and you can concept it out right there. You don't mm. have to draw it or anything. A lot of times drawing will constrain you in what you can do. And you can see already in 3D how it could render, yeah. so you save some time. Yeah, indeed, so yeah. And what kind of extensions do you like to use mainly? Let's say three. Choose your top three extensions so, that you like to use. Uh, so a gentleman on Reddit that I was doing for called Marvin, he suggested to me a taper maker. Mm -hmm. And that's an excellent one. It's a bit slow, but it's great for making tubes. You can just, well, bam, you have a little tube there. So it, uh, it's, it's like the follow me tool, yeah. but you can, you have more flexibility about the width of the tube and the, yeah. the shape? Um, it's, it's pretty basic, I mean, like the, the shape you you start off with, but it's very fast where you can just really make something that tapers along mm -hmm. and it's very simple and intuitive as SketchUp should be. So, okay. indeed, yeah. Uh, so, a second one? A second one, ah, I suggest Artisan if you want to be really serious with things. Artist? Artisan? Artisan. Artisan. A, oh wait, no, that's a paid one. That's a paid one, no. Uh, but I suggest that one too, though. Uh, mm -hmm. For free ones, Hmm, I mean, Fredo's Round Corner, the old version, mm -hmm. like the new one is Fredo Corner. It's, uh, what it does is it bevels edges, and that was paid, but the old one is Round Corner. I think it's still available. Mm -hmm. it's, that, that should be base default. No, there's that one. And then there's Split Tools. No, Split Tools, split tools very nice. should be default in SketchUp. Like, I see people, they're trying to, they lift something out and auto folds, and the geometry is so messed up. <laughs> but if you had Split Tools, you can really make it so it works and that's mm. actually extremely important for importing into game engines because you have to have proper geometry. Yeah, because if there are too many polygons, the game engine would not yeah. work. And, al and also if they're skewed, your UV coordinates won't match yeah. properly. So, so like yeah. Um, yeah. light going from yeah, all those yeah, ways, yeah, should yeah. not be. And it'll, be. it'll mess it up, so definitely. And the third one? Ah, third one, that's a difficult question. I mean, take your time, take your time. I mean, no Fredo words. tools, like the whole compendium of Fredo tools are. The just, old Fredo tools. I know, he's a wizard, like he's some sort of uh, AI machine ghost <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then like Fredo scale, like you can do things with, you can skew things, you can bend things, you mm. can do all that stuff. Also, through paint is where you can uh, put UV coordinated things on stuff, not for like crazy stuff, but. For if you need a, your textures in a certain spot, through paint is exceptionally useful for that. Mm. I think that's free, but I'm not sure on that, but it's good. And so you've been doing 3D designs for a decade now? Uh, more than a decade. More than a decade, yeah. sorry. <laughs> well, and that's, that's and uh, you told me that 
all of this process of learning and uh, experimenting with uh, with your designs, with SketchUp or with all other engines or other tools is for a video game. Can you talk a bit uh, about uh, it? So I've been using 3ds Max as long as I can remember, but SketchUp has been my way to actually learn do these things mm -hmm. so I can have something up on the screen. And what I'm trying to do is Unreal Engine, because I've always used Unreal Engine. It has a visual scripting called Blueprints, because I'm a very visual type of person. Mm -hmm. And I highly re rely on that a lot, because like, I don't, I can't really bother with the syntax and all that. Yeah, yeah. But I, have, I get you, I get yeah, you. Yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. But I have quite the mind for the noodle mess that is involved with that. Like, mm. people say, how can you work with this? It's horrific. No, that's how my mind works. Mm. Like, that's me. That's the personification. What's going on in there? So, so that's it. Uh, like you said, it's a noodle, noodling like mess. A, but it makes sense because you have these big chunks of of code that connect to each other. So yeah, it's like a mind map kind of way. To make mind it, map, exactly. Yeah, I, I did not have the word. Yeah, it makes more. You can see it visually. What's where those relationships are? That's mm. incredibly important, especially for a game that is very uh, unique and different. Because mm. you're you're planning it. You're doing prototypes, and you all do do prototyping phase you really need to know what's going on and how things fit together at a grand scale. Mm. And you won't really get that with compartmentalized code. So you have to really see what's going and, on. And as you said, it's a dyna dynamic game that you want to create. Yes. So as you said, with procedural generations, creating machines to create machines. Indeed, what, yes. what is your goal? In mind, or the first draft of your goal in mind. Ah, so one of my things I'm trying to go for is I see I make these gigantic models, but then they take forever. They take mm -hmm. so long to do so much work. So I want to make it so I have tools, authoring tools that I can make them exponentially faster. Where I can okay. make these massive models, game ready in the engine within a, a week or two, just immediately. Just That's great. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. The tech is there. We just need the to yeah, do it, like the vision behind it. Mm. We just need back to get into okay. it. So then what's next for you, for your game project? Ah, so you caught me at a, quite a transition. Mm. So this is going to be quite the speed run now. I have to get to where I need to be at this point. So next is going to be the prototype. Mm -hmm. This is where, this is the seed to what everything will grow into. Okay. And this, this is very crucial. So I'm going to really put everything I have into it. So, but it's, I'm very confident it will work, extremely confident because Everything is, every piece is there, the planets have aligned, mm -hmm. and the mindset is there, and the discipline is there, everything is there. Okay. It, there's no way it can fail. What it will end up with being is, once again, that meandering, branching, lightning, cast of dendrites. Once those dendrites hit something like the ground, now we have a lightning bolt. Okay. So that's your vision for me. So it, it will be a multi multiplayer game? That's ah, right? That's, that's the idea. I'm trying to make a that's game... That's the main idea, where, yeah, as you said. Because <laughs> yeah. I want to make a game where everyone, uh, or I mean just certain people can play, because I have a lot of brothers, right? Mm. And we just all play different games because we all have different interests. But this one will be designed where it has many different game loops working in tandem with each other in harmony. Mm -hmm. Where we're playing almost a different kind of type of game, but in such a way that we play it with each other. Okay. And it's a very bonding experience because okay. you know, we'll have a great uh, span of how many people can play it. That's a great vision. Yes, indeed. I'm looking forward to it and uh, I hope uh, you're the best. And uh, thanks again for yes. taking the time and uh, enjoy the rest of the event. Oh, no, you too. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thanks a lot. Wow. Okay, scrolling. Let's just talk uh, normally, Already. just for a quick test. Already. So, okay. yeah, just testing out the <coughs> audio. Does it look good? I think it yeah. looks good. Yeah. Hmm. You, you see the wave file here. No? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yes. Okay, rolling.